Some time ago, I was much taken aback to hear that nicotine has healing properties. I wondered if it were true and decided to research it, especially for the sake of SDAs who have been taught for decades that nicotine is harmful. This research will answer two important concerns. One, if nicotine is harmful, why does the body have receptors for nicotine? And two, if God does not want us to use it, why is it found in plants? The title of this video presentation is The Missing Piece in the Nicotine Puzzle. References for my research are indicated within this video. So what is nicotine? Nicotine is a primary component of the tobacco plant, Nicotiana tobaccum, which is a member of the Solanaceae or nightshade family. Nicotine is also produced synthet synthetically in a lab. Products containing nicotine include cigarettes, cigars, e-cigarettes, pipes, chewing tobacco, and smoking cessation products such as nicotine patches, gums, lozenges, nasal sprays, and inhalers. Smoking cessation products, also known as nicotine replacement therapy, were originally designed to help people overcome their addiction to smoking. Nicotine is highly addictive, so these products provide a controlled amount of nicotine to help ease withdrawal symptoms and cravings. Nicotine is also found in other plants in the nightshade family, such as tomatoes, potatoes, eggplants, and peppers, but in much lower levels than the tobacco plant. Nicotine in nicotine products is measured in milligrams, whereas in nightshade plants, it's measured in micrograms or nanograms. And note that one milligram is equal to 1,000 micrograms. So we see there how small a part the micrograms are. And one microgram is equal to 1,000 nanograms, even smaller. And here's a fun fact about tomatoes. The nicotine content decreases as the tomato ripens. So these ripe tomatoes will have very minimal nicotine content. In fact, it is said that the amount of nicotine in green tomato is 10 times the amount in a ripe tomato. And you will see something else of, about the importance of eating ripe versus green in the appendix to this video. Now let's look at an important link in the nicotine chain, acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter or chemical messenger that sends messages from the brain to the body through nerve cells. Now your central and peripheral nervous system muscle and other tissues contain receptors which receive these signals. And these receptors, otherwise known as ACHRs, regulate many aspects of brain and nervous system function. For example, the Bible verses you memorize, your focus on the road, your ability to fall asleep as you hit the bed, the feeling you get when you bounce your toe, the pain. <laughs> the excitement you feel from your spouse's kiss, the worry you feel when there's more month left than money, or your ability to trust God to see you through it all, all are affected by acetylcholine. Now this is where we begin to get to the bottom of the mystery. Going back in history, we learned that scientists tried for decades to identify neurotransmitter receptors and were unsuccessful. Then, somewhere between the 1960s and 1980s, they began using plant toxins and were able to isolate acetylcholine receptors for the first time using nicotine. You see, humans are not the creator. We need tools in order to understand how the body functions. And nicotine was the tool scientists used to understand the characteristics of acetylcholine. And with further experimentation, they soon discovered that acetylcholine also binds to a mushroom poison known as muscarine. They then named the receptor that nicotine binds to 
nicotonic, nicotinic, sorry, acetylcholine receptors or NACHRs and the receptor that muscarine binds to muscarinic acetylcholine receptors, MACHRs. So that is actually how the nicotinic receptor got its name. Not because of nicotine in the body, but because nicotine was the testing tool. So that's how they, that's what they used to identify the, uh, the neurotransmitter, the receptor. And the nicotine, so nicotine is an agonist for NACHRs, meaning it can act on the receptors instead of acetylcholine. This is just like many other chemical substances, right? The, the same action. An agonist is a chemical substance that binds the receptor on a cell and causes a biological response. So agonists actually mimic the actions of hormones or neurotransmitters to produce a response. And some examples are heroin, methadone, morphine, and the other items on our screen. So we see we're getting to the bottom of it. Now, dysfunction of NACHRs has been linked to a number of diseases of the human brain, such as schizophrenia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, and more. And apparently when NACHRs are functioning well, when these receptors are functioning well, it reduces the chances of these diseases. So nicotinic receptors and nicotine replacement therapy are being studied for their possible role in preventing these nervous system diseases. Make sense? And the NRTs are making a difference. Remember that nicotine mimics acetylcholine. So when, for example, you place the nicotine patch on your skin and nicotine is slowly released into your bloodstream, it will increase alertness. It will improve concentration and memory, and it will reduce anxiety. These are what acetylcholine does. So and as an agonist, nicotine will do the same. But God designed the brain to release acetylcholine as needed. However, when man administers acetylcholine, when man administers nicotine, sorry, nicotine hijacks nicotonic acetylcholine receptors and interferes with physiological function of the cholinergic system or the system that uses acetylcholine. Furthermore, using nicotine in any form has dangerous side effects. While traveling through your bloodstream, nicotine damages the lining of your blood vessels. And this thickens and narrows them and causes blood cells to stick to them, which increases the risk of blood clots, heart attack, and stroke. For men, decreased circulation can make it difficult to get an erection. Nicotine can also cause hormonal changes that can affect your fertility. Nicotine also decreases the absorption of calcium and the production of bone-forming cells, causing you to have thinner, brittle bones. And according to Yuji Pines Lifestyle Institute and the CDC, nicotine is a poison. The CDC says that a lethal dose of nicotine for a typical adult weighing 70 kilograms is 50 to 60 milligrams. However, that depends on the weight and the person's overall health. And for children, the lethal dose is 6 milligrams. So the question, again, which we were looking at at the beginning, if nicotine is so dangerous, why does our body contain receptors for nicotine? And the answer, in case you missed it, is your body does not contain receptors for nicotine. When what your body contains are acetylcholine receptors, which can also be activated by nicotine. Got it? What your body needs and contains is acetylcholine, not nicotine. So, question number two. 
if nicotine is so dangerous and your body does not need it, why is it found in plants? Well, there are two possible reasons. One is the experiments that man has been conducting on plants for centuries. Have you ever heard of GMO? GMOs or genetically modified organisms are plants, animals, or microbes that have had their DNA changed using genetic engineering techniques. The Agricultural Marketing Service in Washington, D.C. developed a list of GMOs throughout the world and regulated entities have to maintain records of their work with these crops. Now, it's an interesting fact that two members of the nightshade family are on this list. Apart from bioengineering, other types of experiments have been conducted on nightshade, the nightshade family over the years. The picture on the screen shows experiments in 2023 on the slender nightshade plants. So, the first possible reason is man's experimentation. And now reason number two, why poisonous substances are found in plants is the invention and intervention of the enemy. In Matthew 13, in the parable of the wheat and the tears, the owner's servant asks, So, didst, thou, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tears? And what was his reply? An enemy hath done this. White states in Messenger of the Lord, not one noxious plant was placed in the Lord's great garden. But after Adam and Eve sinned, poisonous herbs sprang up. All tares are sown by the evil one. Every noxious herb is of his sowing, and by his ingenious methods of amalgamation, he has corrupted the earth with tares. Could it be that the enemy created tobacco? Could it? Manuscript Releases, Volume 5. In this book, White states, I have seen in vision that tobacco was a filthy weed and that it must be laid aside or given up. Imagine when we are, we were told so long ago that it must be laid aside and we are now taking it up. Said my accompanying angel, if it is an idol, it is high time it was given up. And unless it is given up, the frown of God will be upon the one that uses it. And he cannot be sealed with the seal of the living God. What powerful words. The quote continues, if it is used as medicine, go to God. He is the great physician. And those that use the filthy weed for medicine greatly dishonor God. 